can be seen. Our Father's Christ, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
That being said, this is going to be an interesting rest uh, week because my topic today is entitled Rest for Your Moment. So try that on. Look at somebody say, Rest for Your Moment. Now, I'm not saying rest for the moment because rest for the moment implies that you just going to take a rest for a minute and then you then you get up, get after it again. Have you ever been mowing a yard and you had to rest for the moment? Drink an iced tea for a second before you dehydrate. Now talk about that. I'm talking about rest for your moment. Your times are in the hands of the Lord. Amen. And there is a time for you to be up. There's a time to get up. There's a time to be blessed. There's a time to rise and shine. There's a time that God's got for you that you haven't entered into yet, but you've got to rest for it. Amen. Amen. So if you have that Bible, turn to chapter 10 of St. Mark. We're going to start reading at verse 46. If you have it, say amen. amen. And I'm going to ask if you are able to stand for the reading of the word. And we'll read it real quick. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Let the people of God say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let God's people say amen. amen. Verse 46, now they came to Jericho as he went out. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, and, great, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I want y'all to say that today. Say, Jesus, Jesus son, of son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind men, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, He's, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni. That I might receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for all these Jesus followers in the room. Thank you, Lord, for those, God, that have cast aside the, the garments of sin and the garments of this world and are living their life, God. In abject following of you. Thank you, Lord, for the people of God that have entered the rest. And thank you, Lord, for the people of God in this place that will enter the rest and rest for the moment. Thank you, Lord, for the moment that is going to, to come to every person that, under the sound of my voice, their moment in time, their moment to be blessed, their moment to receive, their moment to step out of poverty and into prosperity, their moment to step out of sickness and into wellness, their moment, Lord, to step out of relationship disaster and into tranquility. I ask God for the moment for everyone that is in this room. They came to hear this word today, God. You've got a word for them. I thank you, Lord, that you'll speak it and your word will accomplish what it sent to and prosper in that thing and we give you glory now and forever for these things. All the people of God say a big Amen. Amen. And can you just one more time take the two hands that God then gave you and clap them all in people. Shout to God with a voice of victory. Tell them you got victory. Come on. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. So I'm talking to you today just about your moment. And I understand that probably many of us have already had moments in time, moments of greatness. Moments when your child was born that was the height of love, height of whatever God could do. We're talking about fathers day to day, fathers, mothers, you understand that. Or your moment to get that degree, walk across that stage. Your moment when you, uh, you give your daughter's hand in marriage. Your moment standing here at the altar. Making your pledge. Good to see you back. You still honey, honey? <laughs> your moment to take the trip of a lifetime to Italy. Everyone has moments. And so, when I talk about resting for your moment, I'm not really talking about it's just going to be a one-time deal after it's gone. 
you know, it's kind of anticlimactic, it's all over. Life is a series of moments captured sometimes by pictures, captured sometimes in memories. And so, when I'm talking about resting for your moment, I'm talking about being in the state of rest because you're going to need your rest for the time that's coming up. Amen. You're going to need your rest. Look at the next you need your rest. <coughs> Look at somebody real pretty. Don't tell somebody ugly. Now, I don't think there's any ugly people in the road. Real good. Tell somebody real good looking because they won't be offended. Say, you need to do the rest. You need to do the rest. <laughs> Need it. Got to have it. So what are, the, what are the things about rest that you all need to know today so that you can rest for your moment? Number one. I say number one. Is get in place. Get in place. I don't know about you, but I can't sleep in a hotel bed like I can sleep in my own bed. Now my own bed, that mattress, I don't know how old it is. It's got lumps. We got one of those egg crate things over top of it. Trying to make it comfortable. We got old blankets and old sheets. I got an old feather pillow. That would be embarrassed for y'all to see without the pillowcase because it is not nice. But I have to have my pillow. Because there ain't no place like home. And I can't rest in a hotel bed like I can rest in my own bed. Do I have anybody in the room? I can't rest even in church. Anywhere else, like I can rest here at Life Church, because there's a place for everybody. You can only be one place at a time. So that means there's only one place at a time you're supposed to be. Amen. Don't get confused. Amen? Amen. You can't be two places that you made Jesus. Amen? Amen. You got to be in one place at a time. And, and so the scripture starts out and says they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho, everybody say Jericho. Jericho is a place where the walls came tumbling down. Jericho is a place where the children of Israel marched around those walls and they didn't have to fight the battle because God fought the battle for them. Have I got anybody in the room that believes that God will give you a Jericho? And just walk around quiet to the last time. Let them know that you're up to something but they don't know what it is. So they come to this place called Jericho. Joshua thought. God's going to take the children of Israel into the land. And they get to the roadside, and there's blind Bartimaeus. And blind Bartimaeus might just be a blind guy, but he's the son of somebody. Ever talk bad about somebody because they're somebody's baby? Amen? Amen. You're somebody's baby. Amen. In fact, I'm God's baby. Amen. So you show up, don't want to talk bad about me. And I don't want to talk bad, bad about you either. Amen? Amen. Son of Timaeus, blind Barnabas, is found begging by the roadside. But it just so happens that this roadside that he sat was the place where he was going to get what he had need of. And so it is with all of us. There is a place of rest for you. And you have to get in place. You have to get in place. Even in ministry. In ministry, you will wear yourself out if you're not in the right place. Amen. On your job. If you're in the wrong job, you'll wear yourself out. you got to get in place so you're in this place of rest. It's like riding a bicycle. After you learn to ride a bicycle, you don't even have to think about it anymore. If i got anybody in the room. Right? I don't struggle. Now, I hit bad notes, I promise. It's not great. But I don't struggle to play the piano. It's a place of rest for me. I can do it. And you all, can, some of y'all can get in the kitchen. That's a place of rest for you. You can do it. Amen? Amen. And so it is with all of us. There is a place of rest for you to be. And you need to get in that place because you've got a moment coming that you won't be rested up for unless you're in place. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Number two. The second thing about uh, resting for your moment is you've got to listen for God in this place. Listen for God. Look at somebody and say, listen for God. I love this. Because blind Bartimaeus heard it was Jesus of Nazareth coming down the road. Now, all of you all probably understand this, that when someone is blind, their other senses become heightened. And so it is with all of us. Is there, there are deficiencies in all of us. I don't have everything. 
You don't either. Amen. God didn't give anybody everything, but He gives everybody something. Amen. Right? Amen. So don't let the fact that you may be blind, or the fact that you may be deaf, or the fact that you may not can do this, or you may not can do that, or you don't have that degree, or, or whatever it is that you see as your shortcoming, don't let it stop you from listening for God. Because Jesus is on His way to you. Jesus is coming to you for your moment. You've got to have your ears healed. You've got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Look at somebody right in their eyeballs and say, God is trying to tell you something. Yes, He is. Amen. And blind or may not could see, but He could hear. And He heard Jesus all the way. He was listening for God. So in this place of rest, I'm not resting outside of the voice of God. The voice of God may not be in the rocks being torn. And it may not be in, in the wind. And it may not be in the rain. It may be in a still small voice. And while I'm yelling and screaming and upset and, and fussing and fighting and cussing and a Jerry Springer show just waiting to happen, while I'm that, I can't listen for God. Look at your neighbor and say, sometimes you got to hush. Amen. And you got to listen a minute. Because yeah, yeah. your moment's on the way. And you can't be in rest while you're all in consternation. Amen? Amen. How many have ever just had, just, none of y'all here, because I, I know y'all are super sanctified, but I'm talking about somebody, you have a friend that is just like fussed and fought out in the yard in your underwear with your wife or your husband just almost, they almost called the law, maybe they did. Amen. Somebody went, went away for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Wheels being peeled out of the parking lot. None of y'all. But I know, me personally, when I get like that, I can't rest. And that's why the Bible says, don't let the sun settle down on your anger. Don't let it set on your wrath. You've got to listen for God. You've got to settle yourself down. You've got to simmer down and listen. I love the picture of blind Bartimaeus because he could do a whole lot for himself. And he was in the state of begging, which is not an ideal place to be. It does exhibit humility. But who wants to be a beggar? Who wants to be in that place? But for him to hear that Jesus was on the way, he had to stop his begging. Amen. If Jesus is on the way, you don't have to beg. Amen. I've heard God, people pray, please, God, please. And I believe in asking that your joy may be full, but you don't have to beg. Amen. How many thank God for God that you don't have to Amen. beg? This is not a religion where you have to fall off yourself and beat yourself and make yourself low and, and crawl on bloody knees to some kind of statue you do not have to be. Jesus is coming. Listen to him. Number three. Are you with me? Amen. If you're with me, say, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Say, oh yeah. yeah. Say, oh yeah. Say, oh yeah. That's good. Number three. When you're resting for your moment, Cry out to God. Cry out to God. Now I already said this important, but when you know He's there, there is a time to lift your voice. There's a time to lift your soul. There's a time to lift your 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 spirit man in worship and in prayer unto Him. I believe that you'll get a whole lot more done. You'll hasten your day and hasten your moment when you are in, in a in an attitude of gratitude. Have we got anybody in the room? When you're in a place of praise. When you're in a place of, I'm not yelling at somebody else. I'm not trying to make somebody else make it happen. I'm lifting my voice to God. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He didn't say it one time. He kept on saying it. He realized that Jesus is on the road and he was about to pass him by. And he wasn't going to let his moment pass him by. He was going to cry out for all that is worth. And so it is with all of us. God knows the sound of your voice and there's not another person on the planet that has this your sound. I say this all the time. You know why there's not another person 
in the world that can praise Him for you. The Bible says if you don't praise Him, what will cry? The rocks will cry. There's not another person that can praise Him for you. Amen. Barbara. Because there's not another person on the planet that sounds like you. Amen. Your voice is just like a fingerprint. Amen. Yeah. I may not be the best singer, but I can say this eyes bottle open and not be bragging. There ain't nobody that sings like me. Amen. <laughs> it's true. You might be the worst singer in the room, but I want you to turn to somebody right next to you and say, there ain't nobody that sings like me. Celine Dion ain't got nothing on me. She can't sing like me. And she can. And my certain things ain't like her. <laughs> we as parents, those of us that have it, can pick our child's voice out of a room filled with kids. We don't. It's something to make it. And God's got six and a half billion people on the planet. He knows the sound of his child. And sometimes he's just waiting for us to cry out. Amen. When Sylvie Day wants something, she's not forming words all yet. She's not, she can't ask you for it. She's just got to holler. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> gorgeous black hair. She got a heart. And so it is with all of us. You got a heart. Yeah. I'm glad I'm Pentecostal. I wouldn't have made it as an Episcopalian. They would have thrown me right now. Wow. First, Sunday. First Sunday. You came to a church where you could cry out to God. Somebody say, Jesus. 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 That was more Episcopalian <laughs> than Pentecostal. But I didn't give you much warning. So I'm going to count to three. And I want you to holler out like blind Bartimaeus did. Maybe you got something that you need God to do. And just crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Will unlock heaven's potential for you. One, two, three. Jesus. There you go. That's it, Jesus. You've got to learn to call the name of the Lord. There is nobody like Jesus. There is nobody on the planet that can touch you like he can. There's nobody in the world that can move things around like him. He sits high, but he looks low. And he's behind the scenes pulling strings. And your supervisor may not try to keep you down, but the Lord knows how to move your supervisor out of the way. You can look at somebody and say, you might be over me, but I know somebody over all of you. Amen. 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 This is God. Cry out to Him. Yes. Cry out to Him. You know what you're doing when you're crying out to everybody else? You just whine. Yes. Talk to the one who can do something about it. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to say this however we want because I, I know y'all got roast in the oven and Father's Day celebrations and all that. Somebody barbecued it out and almost smelled charcoal. Mm, that's right good. <laughs> But one of my pet peeves, and I'm just going to go ahead and call the name of the company, Verizon. They will leave you on hold forever and a day. I mean, sometimes when you're on hold with Verizon, you think Jesus is going to come and you're not even going to get your bill straight down. Have I got anybody in the room with Verizon? <laughs> there are all kinds of companies like this. So this is my pet peeve. Being on hold forever. And then talking to somebody who you try to get them to fix it. They say, oh, kids, take the care of it. And then you get the bill the next month. And then you get taken care of it. And then you've got to go through the process again. Because you were talking to somebody who could not help you. That's what we do a lot. When we want to talk to somebody about the problems we're having with somebody else. They cannot help you. And a lot of times, even talking to the one you're having a problem with. I'm not saying don't do it, because the Bible says do it. Sometimes you've got to go up over their head. Amen. Oh, never mind. I'll talk to your supervisor. Who's the supervisor? I need to speak to the manager. Amen. I pulled that on Verizon. Who's over you? Give me somebody else. You can't help me. <laughs> a lot of times they couldn't help either. Go straight to the top. 
His name is Jesus. Amen. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There ain't nobody like Him. He is on your side. You all hear me today. Jesus Christ is the first and the last. The Alpha and the Omega. And everything that exists is upheld by the power of the Word. For by Him and through Him and back to Him are all things. If I got anybody in the room that believes that you know Jesus, the one who is, who was, and who is to come, He will always be. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if He's been good to you up until now, He won't stop being who He's been up until now. All throughout eternity, He will be who He's been to you. Are you thankful that you know Him? Amen. 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 We don't tap into our powers, the people of God, because we don't call on the one that we know. Amen. And I've got somebody in the room that's fit to be tied behind things in the news, and I am too. But I've got a way that I can pray and see things happen. Amen. And so do you. That's what we got to do. Look at Jesus. That's what you got to do. You got a moment coming, but you got to cry out. Amen. Number four. Don't be deterred. Number four. When it's your moment, do not be deterred. The blind bar man said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I could see him there in his beggar's clothes, dirty, unwashed, low class. Ooh, that's a little hot. He turned down a bit. I probably just. Y'all won't get the word today because it's got a high volume on it. <laughs> Dirty, unwashed, low class, white trash. That's right, still be dead. Just a nobody. But he was somebody. How many of you ever felt like the last one picked? How many of you ever felt like you weren't quite up to snuff as somebody else? You weren't good enough. You weren't the prettiest. You weren't the best. I, I, I was strongly growing up, so I tended to be like one of the last ones to pick Janice. Just laugh. They didn't want me on their team. Kind of hurt my feelings. It would be me and the chubby girl. And sometimes the chubby girl would get picked first. And then I'd get on the team and I would be like a scream of terror because I'm like, you picked me last? You really think that I'm? I try to prove myself. You don't have to prove yourself. You are good enough because God made you. He was the son of Timaeus. You're the son and daughter of God. Amen. And people will try to deter you from getting what God has for you. Be quiet. You're just a nobody. You're just a nothing. God doesn't have time for you. Jesus is important. His time is too valuable for you to be taken up with yelling and screaming. Be quiet. Shut up. We don't want to hear it. You're not getting what you are coming for. That house will never be yours. You won't get the love. You're going to have to drive a car with tires that may pop that you've got to push to get started all your life because no one's going to give you a new one. Sit by the road. Rest it for your home. Someone will tell you no. Someone will try to stop you. Someone will try to stand in the way. And the reason is, is just human nature. This goes back to kids. And if you've got kids that are siblings, you'll see if someone, if, it, if a kid has something that other one doesn't have and they're fighting over it, and you take it away from the one that has it, the one that didn't have it will be just as happy as he did. <laughs> Because if they can't have it, they don't want them having it either. Amen. Or because they have it, they're just a little bit better. Y'all hear me today? This is human nature. I'm trying to stop you from having a moment. Do not be deterred. Do not let the naysayers stop you from getting what God has for you. God's got something for you that's so wonderful, that's so great. That it is a trick of the enemy to deceive you out of it by getting someone to stand in your way and tell you, no, be quiet. Be quiet. 
But he cried out all the more. He ratcheted it up just a moment. And he said, wait a minute. He's coming. I can't see him, but I can hear him. I can't see it, but I know it. I can't see where my moment is going to happen. I can't see where this church is going to be filled. Wall to wall, wall to wall people. But I know it in my knower. I can hear it with my spirit ears. And I will not be deterred. I will not let someone say no to him. Amen. Do y'all hear me today? That's my dream. But what is your dream? Yes. That you have said it before you. That someone says that ain't going to happen. You're too old. You're not smart enough. You can't do it. Do not be deterred. Go for it. Look at somebody and say, cry out all the more. The fact that someone stood up against you only means that it's going to happen. Amen. 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 And the stronger the adversity is toward it, the greater it's going to be when it happens. Because you'll appreciate it. We teach our kids this. You appreciate more what you have to work for than when it's just handed over to you. So Brian Bartimaeus participated in his own moment. He participated with it. God's not saying that you have to do it, but he would have liked a little cooperation. Amen? Don't be deterred. Number five and the last one. When it's your moment, rest in your moment, rest in your moment, when it's your moment. Number five, realize your moment. Realize it. Recognize your time. Recognize it. Realize it. I realize when I'm talking about things in chronological time sequence, that I may be talking to you about something that you haven't obtained yet. Maybe just to put it in in the lines of let me just talk about graduates. I got two high school graduates here today. Raise your hand, Kenneth. Graduated. Oh, that's the wrong one. I'm sorry, I can't see from here. Well, Janice has a graduate. Kenneth graduated from high school and graduated from high school. You had to work twelve years for that moment in time. And it happened in 2014, but you were in school in 2013, 2012, 2011. All your life you've been in school. Can I get an amen? amen. And so I realize when I'm talking about your moment, that you, it may be somewhere in the future, in time. But you have to realize when a moment is yours. You have to realize when God is, is settling down upon you to give you something. And so Jesus on his road, I just I don't know, I almost picture Jesus walking like with roller skates, like really not moving his feet, but I don't know if you've ever seen that uh, Brown Stoker's Dracula. I should not be saying this in church. But <laughs> that Dracula didn't walk, he just kind of slid across the floor. I just picture Jesus walking down the road like that, just like moving. Mm, that's not really... But I know he moved his feet. But he had a row on, so you could see him moving, so it probably did look like that. Here he comes, and he is hollering, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He was not polite. He was screaming his head off. And Jesus stood still. And he commanded him to be brought. So the turn on and said, be of good cheer. All of a sudden, the ones that said, no, you're not going to get it. Be quiet. Oh, Jesus is calling you. So now I'm going to be your friend. Now you got a car. Now I'm going to be your friend. Now, you know, your friends are so-and-so, so I can be your friend. So they changed the tune. Be of good cheer. He's calling you. So blind Bartimaeus realizes his moment. He is rested by the road, begging in the city of Jericho all of his life. He has depended upon the kindness of strangers all of his life. He's just waited on somebody to come and bring it all his life. And Jesus, God, Son of God, Son of David, calls him up. And they said, be a good cheer. He's calling you. He realizes this moment. And the beggar's garment that he wore, because of those times, they wore clothes that indicated their station in life. What they were they wore it. If they were a lawyer, they had on a suit. If they were a beggar, they had on a beggar's rag. And blind Bartimaeus said, we're fixing to drop the blind card. I'm 
cast off this room. And I'm not going to Jesus a beggar. I'm not going to Jesus a blind man. I'm going to Jesus someone who is coming to get what he says I can have. And he cast it aside because he realized his moment. There is a time for you to shed your snake skin. There is a time for you to move out of the shell that you've been living in. It's a beauty. Look at your neighbor and say, you may be a snail, but you need a bigger house. <laughs> There's a time to move on up. There's a time to be like the Jeffersons, right? You can't stay and peck with the chickens when God's calling you to soar with the eagles. There's a time to cast it off. To say, this is not me, this may have been me, I may have lived my life in slavery to drugs. I may have lived my life an alcoholic. I may have lived my life promiscuous. I may have lived my life addicted. I may have lived my life poor. I may have lived my life in sickness. But I'm leaving that in a heap and I'm moving to God because it's my moment. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I've already said that I, I believe even though I'm speaking in the singular, that life is a series of moments. So here we are right now, a moment in time. And this could be your moment. Hopefully you're at rest in the presence of God, the Spirit of the Lord, and I feel the Spirit of peace in this house. I feel God. And I'll take a little help if you could uh, hand up or somebody can help me. The Spirit of the Lord is here and is blackening you with His love and His peace. And He's coming down your road. He's walking down the avenue of your soul. And He's wondering if you'll just listen to Him. And hear what He has to say to you. And He's wondering also. The Lord is wondering what He can do for you. Jesus obviously saw the man was blind even without his blind man beggar's garment. But He's still asking what can I do for you? Because the truth is, is you can have a need in your life. You can have a need in your life. And not ever ask God to do anything about it. And God will wait for you to ask. You come to this moment. You come to this place. As in the still of your heart and mind, I just ask you to bow your heart and your hands with me. Before the Lord. And in your own tabernacle your own soul. Have this moment with Jesus. Have this moment with God. What is it? He says, what can I do for you? And that's what I believe God is asking each and every one of you today. What can I do for you? In the stillness of the room and in the quiet of your soul, does it have to be out loud? Why don't you ask God something here today for yourself? Tell him your deepest, deepest desire. Tell him.